Hi friends, welcome to the part 3 of the video. So today we will discuss about the rules of working people. Before we begin, do you want to know uh, what is marketing orientation? If you want to know, stick with us till the end of the video and we will let you know. So basically there are four rules of working deeply and you can apply them based on your requirement. And uh, so we will try to understand uh, these four different categories one by one with the help of examples. For example, uh, you are a writer and you want to really devote time, you don't want to be distracted, your work is very innovative and you have to write about new ideas. Uh, this requires a lot of concentration. For this, you need to, you need to be in a secluded place where uh, you are able to focus solely on your task and there is no distraction. For people like the writer, it would be better if they are able to adopt wherein they are secluded from their day-to-day -day life and they move to a place where they are able to focus solely on the task at hand. Because in this uh, approach you are living like a monk, this is called a monastic philosophy of deep work scheduling. And this attempts to maximize the deep efforts by eliminating or radically minimizing shallow obligations. Now, uh, coming to the second example, uh, we can think of a person who is uh, who is a working professional. He has to deliver certain task to his office and he also wants to get involved in a project that requires a deep work. So, this type of work, he can schedule certain fixed hours and devote those hours particularly to his deep task. So as compared to the monastic philosophy here, what, what the person is trying to do is rather than devoting the whole time to a particular task at hand and moving out of the location, he is trying to devote a certain time slot to that particular task at hand so that he is able to complete that. And in between he is also going uh, for the other task. For example, he is uh, finishing off his uh, work for the office and he is trying to accomplish other tasks as well. Of course, the task which he is focusing on, the, the task which requires deep work has to be uh, has to be in a setting where there are no distractions. Then there is a third method in which depending on the schedule of the person, the person is able to devote certain time slots based on, based on the availability of time. So, for example, in a day, you can devote one hour uh, in the morning, one hour in the afternoon and one hour in the evening. So, that completes three hours of your time. So, depending on the schedule, you can choose the particular rule and the particular strategy to apply. This is called Rhythmic Philosophy of Deep Work Scheduling. Now, there is the last philosophy of working. In this philosophy, for example, your schedule is very busy and you have to complete certain tasks and it requires a lot of traveling. So in this in this particular case, uh, you can have different time slots and whenever you are able to find time, you uh, set out to work on that and uh, devote all your energy for the deep task at hand. This is called the journalistic philosophy of deep work scheduling and uh, in this, whenever you find certain time slot, you get into deep work mode and start working. So if you look at uh, uh, the four different the philosophies and the approaches to work uh, these depend on your schedule so based on your schedule you can apply what works best for you so after a day of uh, the deep work it is very important to ritualize ritualize the deep work uh, so what does it mean it means that you need to have a proper place uh, to work and uh, you also need to define how long you will work and you also have to define how will you support your work that means from where you will get your food so that uh, uh, the task the number of hours devoted to the task are uninterrupted there is one very important ritual which can be done at the end of the day is to say to yourself that i have finished off my task now there is one more important point regarding deep work you have to focus on widely important points. What this means is there can be a number of tasks in your office and some of them might be the ones which require your attention immediately. So you need to focus on those tasks and finish them off rather than trying to execute all the tasks 
and then you know giving equal importance to all the tasks so you have to identify and based on the priority of the task you have to you have to finish off those tasks and alongside that you also need to schedule slots for deep work there is one uh, more very important point which we need to keep in mind we have to keep a compelling scoreboard what it means is that uh, we need to keep track of all the hours we have invested in the deep work and what is the outcome which we have received out of uh, putting an efforts in the deep work uh, this will definitely help us in identifying the areas where we need improvement and also it will be a motivation for us to understand and to measure our success uh, because it is very important that we measure our success or failures to take corrective actions one more very important point and might be the favorite of every everybody would be be lazy what it means is that uh, once you are set out to do deep work and you have put in certain number of hours in deep work then you also need to relax and rejuvenate so that uh, uh, you are able to re-energize yourself and you are able to devote the renewed energy into the task at hand the next day so we come to the end of this video so coming to the question of uh, what is marketing orientation marketing orientation is the orientation of the organization which thinks from the perspective of the customer and everything in the company is looked at from the perspective of the customer for example uh, what the customer requires in terms of pricing uh, in terms of uh, making it simple for him to understand if you really like our work please do subscribe thank you